name's Ellie. And I'm Ava. And today we're going to be interviewing Miss Cooper. Um, so the first question is, how does it feel to be a teacher here, one, like, at the school that you were taught? More than anything, it was a sense of familiarity, because like you guys, I spent three years here, and um, the, I knew a lot of the people who are still around, which is a really welcoming environment. I could trust that Derby is a great, um, a great place to be and to teach, so... It was strange at first, as I'm sure you can imagine, um, but after that it just felt comfortable and it just seems like a good fit. Cool. Uh, why did you decide to work here out of like all the middle schools? Why would you pick this one? I, before I was looking for a full-time position, I was substitute teaching and I had spent some time here as a substitute teacher and the staff that I knew from my time here as a student as well as the staff who came afterward, it's just an incredible group and they helped me feel welcomed and comfortable and helped me grow as a person and as an educator so it just seemed like a really uh, strong choice. And then the third question is um, how do you handle the stress of bad kids? I don't like to think of kids as bad. <laughs> I like to think of kids making a variety of choices some of which are not my favorite um, but I just remember that this is an age where kids learn by making mistakes, so I have to respect and understand that and sort of coach them through. So I like to think about why maybe a choice was made, how to make sure that they don't repeat it, and that, that they also learned from what that taught them. So I just try to be strategic if I can to guide them through making good choices. Cool. Uh, how do you feel um, helping kids and knowing that they can achieve their goals this year? I you know, always strive to have students feel like they are accomplished and that they are making growth and that they are seeing progress in themselves. Um, so it's always a really good feeling when I see them accomplishing those goals. And it's, um, it's just a really satisfying feeling to know that I'm, well, attempting to help them with that. Um, so the um, sixth question is, what is your goal this year? My personal goal, um, there are many, but to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can in my power to help students feel safe and comfortable to make mistakes because kids often are shy about doing something because they're worried they'll do it wrong. Well, that's how we learn, so I want to make sure kids have a safe space where they feel comfortable enough to try and fail because that's part of life. Uh, uh, thank you, Ms. Kuguru, for coming thank on you. and interviewing, well, well, letting us interview you. Um, um, Maya is next with Current Events. Hi, my name is Maya Schulteis and today I'm going to be discussing current world events. The first world event I will be discussing is about the Israeli leader. Benjamin Netanyahu is being indicted on charges of fraud, breach of trust, and bribery. This is the first time in Israeli history that a sitting prime minister is facing indictment and criminal investigations. When Netanyahu was speaking last Thursday night, he said that the charges were an unattempted coup against the prime minister and then he vowed to continue to lead the country. A second world event is that a blue whale's heartbeat was recently recorded. This was done by the University of Stafford. The blue whale's heartbeat is as slow as two beats per minute when it's diving for food. When the whale is at the very bottom of the dive, the heart rate increased to about 2.5 times the minimum and then decreased again. When the whale reached the surface, the heart rate increased again. The whale's highest heart rate was between 25 and 37. For humans between the ages of 6 and 15, the average heart rate is between 70 and 100. The third world event is about Chile. Right now, there are many protests that are continuing and getting more dangerous. People are starting to get injuries and some are even dying. A 39-year-old named Alex has died along with many other people. These protests are happening in, this, in Chile. There is smoke in the air and flags are being held up everywhere with crowds of people. Our last world event is about the Indian Navy having their first woman pilot. 
The woman goes by Shivanji and she is 24. She is taking control of an aircraft, which is a huge milestone for India's armed forces. She completed her training in 2018 at the Indian Naval Academy. She says, it's a big responsibility for all of us and I know that I have to do well. Thanks for listening. Now to Carson with sports. You really need to recycle because like it's bad for the environment, so why did you put it in the trash bin and the recycling bin? Like not cool. I am um, sorry. Um, I guess I'll recycle next time. Yeah, paper is recyclable, so is plastic, but plastic takes a really long time to recycle. So please, recycle. 251 million tons of consumer waste is produced by the U.S. each year. 32% of that is composted or recycled, and 12.5% of that is burned. That is horrible for the environment. Scientists believe that due to climate change and pollution, by tw the next 20 years, we can't undo like all the bad stuff we've done. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Carson and today I will be doing a brief sports segment. I hope you will enjoy it. So today's topic is the Lions and MSU versus Michigan. The Lions are just getting worse every game. They've barely won any games this football season. They should be called the House Cats because they can't even win any of their games. These people literally get paid thousands of dollars to fail to catch a ball. People even say well, the Lions are the worst team right now, but they're not quite that bad in my opinion. Alright, all right, it's time to move on to a rivalry. The recent MSU versus Michigan game was not surprising, but also sad for Spartan fans like me. Um, um, yeah, MSU really got obliterated with a final score of 10-44. to The performance of MSU during the football season has been kind of okay, mostly losing lately. Unlike MSU, Michigan has been doing very well lately, at, and they are, have only lost a few games, but didn't do so well against Ohio State. And everything I wanted to talk about on MSU and Michigan is the recently started basketball season. Yes, I know, MSU and Michigan haven't played yet, but I just wanted to talk about the teams anyway. MSU has lost a couple games, but they aren't doing so bad if a few wins. Michigan has all, all, won all of their games currently, and they're doing very well right now. Well, we still have most of the basketball season to go. I hope MSU wins most of their games this season. All right, that's all for sports today. Time to move on to Ellie. Hi, my name is Ellie. And today I'm going to be doing an opposing an opinion article on why you should adopt for animals rather than shop. Um, adopting has been becoming more and more popular, and here are some reasons why people are adopting and why are people and why people are choosing to adopt instead of shop. First of all, when you adopt, you are not only helping the animal or animals that you choose to adopt, but you're also helping another animal in need because when you adopt from a busy shelter, rescue group, or sadly even a kill shelter, another pet will, another spot will open up for an animal. An example of this would be if you adopt a dog from a rescue that is, uh, that is busy, a dog that they might have not had sent, they might have sent, had sent to um, a not as good option, but since you chose to adopt your dog, the dog that would have had been not sent to a good place like a kill shelter is not is now able to go to a safe shelter where they can wait further to find a home. Did you know that over 3.7 million animals are in, that are in custody of shelters and rescues are sadly youth, euthanized each year? Another reason why you should adopt instead of buying from a breeder is that you can save a lot of money and spend it for extra finances for your pet. This can be very helpful because animals need many things to keep them happy, healthy, and entertained. When you adopt a dog, it can cost anywhere from 0 to $250 at max. Well, a dog from a breeder can cost anywhere from 500 to the most expensive being $2 million. 
for a type of mastiff, which is a dog breed that you can adopt from most shelters, for about an average of $100, which is far less. I hope this that, that this has encouraged you to adopt. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ava, and I'll be doing celebrity news. Uh, in September, Kevin, on September 1st, Kevin Hart got into a serious car crash um, in Malibu. Kevin Hart was a passenger in his 1970 Plymouth Barracuda when it drove off the off the Mulholland Highway. The injuries that Kevin Hart had sustained was very serious, and he needed surgery right away. He had he fractured his he fractured his back in three places in his lower spinal cord. Doctors believed he would never walk again, but uh, recently he was seen walking with his wife. But and he says that he can walk, but in excruciating pain. The people that were in the past, uh, the people in the car that were that was with Kevin Hart are now suing him because um, are suing him because they believe that he the, that he was neglecting the safety of his car. The model of his car was built without seatbelts, and they they say that he should have been more worried about safety than the authenticity. So for anyone who knows My Chemical Romance knows that they are on a tour, uh, um, a, a reunion tour at the moment. Yes, it is only in LA, but still the band is back together. The lead singer of the band at the moment is promising new songs and hopefully a new album. album. They got back together after like six years. Tom Holland is apparently um, supposed to cross over in the new Venom movie. The director has confirmed this. Also. This might be his last Marvel movie because the, even though they did say in August that they resolved the, 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 the uh, discussion, they have officially dropped him. Um, thousands of fans have pledged to storm the Sony and Disney uh, headquarters. I agree with the fans because Spider-Man just got into the MCU. Uh, his, all of his co-workers are all very happy to work with him and have expressed sadness because he is leaving. Brendan Urie, the lead singer of... Uh, Panic at the Disco has recently donated one million dollars to the LGBTQ plus youth community to help set up gender and sex sexuality slash gay straight alliance clubs in schools across the U.S. Brendan Urie partnered with GLSEN, the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network, to help launch clubs for the LGBT plus youth in America high schools. This partnership was also to follow up with the Higher Hopes Foundation, Brendan Urie's foundation for human rights advocacy across marginalized communities, communities that are confined to the lower or empirical edge of society. Mine, um, have a good day, signing out.